Hey, what's up, Yognite Middle School? Welcome to another Sunday with another Sunday sermon, okay? Let's do a few announcements before we begin. Um, after service, grab some lunch, and then we will see you at the 1 p.m. small group Zoom. So please come to that. Uh, secondly, we had our first Friday Night Fellowship this past week, and I hope it was really fun for all of you. Um, this coming Friday, we have another Friday Night Fellowship at 7.30, so I hope you can join. Uh, third, we will continue with our Bible study on Wednesday nights. We had another big turnout last Wednesday, so I hope you guys had a good time with that too. Um, please come out on Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. to go through the book of Esther. Okay. Um, and finally, if you, want, if you guys are not receiving my emails with my announcements, please make sure you let me know so that I can add you to the list. Okay. All right. With that, let's pray first before we begin. Lord, we ask for your spirit to come. And open us up to your word today. May you work in us and speak through the Bible as we meditate on the message that you have prepared for your people. Give us the wisdom to understand and the character to apply what we learn to our walk with you. We thank you for your grace. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody. Let's recap because as we go through the book of Joshua, we have to know what happened before in order to understand what happens next. Okay? So... Week one, what do we talk about? We talked about how it is always, okay, it is always between God's side or being against God, okay? It's not Israel versus the enemy, it's God versus everyone else. So you can either be on God's side or on the enemy side, no middle ground, okay? Week two, we saw the desperate faith of the Israelites as they battled against Jericho and the desperate faith of Rahab the prostitute as she uh, lied and uh, concealed the spies in the city, Week three, we saw what happens when Israel gets proud, right? They saw the breaking of faith with uh, Achan, right? Because remember Achan? He stole some of the things that were supposed to be destroyed, and therefore Israel lost their battle, right? Week four, we learned about how the Gibeonites were able to trick Israel, right? And how in the same way that Rahab lied to cover up the spies, I mean, it wasn't exactly a good thing. However, God had a gracious faith toward them, right? God was gracious toward them. And that, that is the gracious faith we learned about in week four. Last week, we learned about how the Israelites failed to have a lasting faith, a faith that, that kept going, a lasting faith um, that was a long obedience uh, to, toward God, right? <clears throat> and how they failed to drive out all of the Canaanites in the promised land. Today is actually the last day that we're going to be going through the book of Joshua, right? And uh, we're going to be reading a passage from chapter 24. You see, after leading Israel to many, many victories against the Canaanites, Joshua gathered them, gathers them together one last time at the end of Joshua, the end of the book of Joshua, and he gives a great speech. He reminds the Israelites of God's faithfulness, and he also tells them, right, he challenges them one more time, please follow God, okay? So let's read together what Joshua says in chapter 24, verses 14 through 18, okay? Let's read together. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your father served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. And if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve whether the gods your father served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight, and preserved us in all the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for He is our God." And then they all lived happily ever after. The end. Just kidding. <laughs> Everything seems fine up until here. But Joshua has a really weird and interesting response to what the Israelites say. Okay, He tells them to follow God. right? And then the Israelites say, of course, we will remember God. We will follow God. But let's look at what happens after in verses 19 through 25. Okay, Joshua chapter 24 verses 19 through 25. But Joshua said to the people, You are not able to serve the Lord, for He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. 
He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then He will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, but we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve Him. And they said, We are witnesses. He said, Then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your heart to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve and His voice we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and put in place statutes and rules for them at Shechem. Okay, so when the people say, we will serve God and remember Him, Joshua says, what? You can't. You can't do the thing I just asked you to do. What? Like, this is super confusing. Why would Joshua tell the Israelites to do something and then immediately after go, you can't do this thing I just told you to do? That's really weird. Imagine if I preached a sermon to you guys and said, that's why you should read the Bibles. And then, all, and then all of you guys go, yes, we will read the Bible. And then I immediately say, well, you can't because God is too holy and you can't serve him. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> that's really strange and it doesn't make sense. Um, so why is Joshua saying this? I mean, look at how the people fight back. They say, no, 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 Joshua, we will definitely serve the Lord. We will choose to serve him. And Joshua says, okay, if you're serious, put away your foreign gods. Turn your heart toward God. And guess what? He still doesn't trust them. Okay, let's finish out this chapter. Okay, verses 26 through 28. Let's read it together. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God. And he took a large stone and set it up there under the terebinth, or terebinth that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said to all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness against us. For it has heard all the words of the Lord that he spoke to us. Therefore, it shall be a witness against you, lest you deal falsely with your God. So Joshua sent the people away, every man to his inheritance. He writes down what the Israelites promised, and he puts up this big rock. And he says, this rock is going to be a symbol to remind you that you promised to follow God today. This rock is going to remember your promise. If you ever lie to God, this rock will remember what was promised and you will be punished, right? Wow, Joshua really doesn't trust that the Israelites are going to follow this promise. Why do you think that is? Well, I think part of that is because um, something that Joshua actually mentions two times in this passage. He says, turn away from your foreign gods. Basically, he says, turn away from idolatry. Turn away from your idols. Give up those idols, right? Now, what Joshua talk, is talking about here, it's not Buddha, it's not Allah, it's not like uh, that, I don't know, Vashti or like the Hindu gods or whatever, it, it's Vishnu or it's not that. It's not talking about other religions, okay? Right here, what Joshua is talking about is something called idolatry and we have to understand what that means to an Israelite if we want to understand what it means for us. What is idolatry? What are foreign gods, right? Do you guys know why idols and foreign gods were so bad in the Old Testament? It's not because those things were bad or evil things, okay? In fact, in that time, during that culture, okay, it was normal to have lots of different gods. It was normal to worship and pray to many different gods. So it's not like it was a weird thing. It wasn't a bad or immoral or evil thing, but God's rules for worshiping him were extremely difficult to follow. They were inconvenient, right? It was hard. It was uncomfortable, okay? Remember, a lot of these guys, they were farmers. So they were working in the sun all day. And guess what? God says, you have to worship me in my temple, okay? You can't worship me in the field. You can't worship me anywhere else. You have to come to my temple to worship me. And not just that, they had to do their sacrifices and offerings exactly the way that God asked them to do it. Okay? It has to be this specific, special type of animal. It has to be this specific amount of grain. Right? Every single thing had to be exactly the way God told them. Not to mention, right? God said, no statues, no statues of me. You have to pray to me in your heart. All the other gods during that time, they had statues. They had golden statues. They had idols that you could pray to. And God said, no, not me. There is no statue for me. Only pray to me in your heart. 
it was hard. It was really inconvenient. It was very uncomfortable to worship God during this time. And that's why the Israelites turned to idolatry, turned to foreign gods. It was convenient. You see, when they went out into the fields to work as farmers, there was probably an altar for that idol right there, right next to, them, next to that field, right? It was delicious, right? They had meat, and then they had these huge barbecues where they would all do these big cook, uh, the, these barbecue cook-offs together and then would eat the meat together, right? God said, no, none of that. You have to burn up the fat and then give the meat to the priest, right? And then it was easy, there just weren't as many rules. Worship was easier. People loved to hear the things that, they, that they, they were preaching in those temples. Why? Because a lot of times when God speaks to them, it was other really difficult, inconvenient things. And they liked these idols. Does it sound familiar? It should. Why? Because idolatry is rampant today. Right? People go to any church they want. For whatever reason. You know, oh, I like, I like the worship team over there. I like the pastor over here. So I'm just going to go for worship here and then listen to this pastor over here. Right? I'm just going to uh, go wherever I'm most comfortable. Wherever I feel the best. I'm going to worship God however I feel is most comfortable for me. Jesus is great. Jesus is awesome. Jesus loves me so much. And he saves me. But la 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 Jesus. I can't hear you when you tell me that I have to follow you. When I have to do the things you ask me to do. When you tell me to deny myself and pick up my cross. Oh la 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 la. I don't know. When you tell me I have to sell everything that I own. And give to the poor. Ah la 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 la. I don't know. Idolatry guys. Idolatry is saying that I will only worship God. According to my terms. So what have we learned? Foreign gods and idolatry. Okay, they're not other religions. It's not Buddha. It's not Allah. It's not, it's not another religion. Okay? Foreign gods don't really need anything from you. They just want you to have a good time. Enjoy your life. Make lots of money. No hard questions. It's okay. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. Foreign gods are self-serving, self-indulgent, self-pleasing, and selfish. Foreign gods were sin. So when Joshua says, I don't believe you, you can't keep your promise, and I'm going to set up this giant rock to warn you again, to remember, it's because he knows how sinful the Israelites were. Because you guys got to remember this, right? When we walk through um, the Bible from the beginning, right? The Israelites never finished conquering the promised land. There were Canaanites everywhere. In fact, when we get next week into the book of Judges, you're going to see how bad the Israelites really get. And why does Joshua keep allowing and mentioning foreign gods? It's because it costs something. It is extremely expensive to follow God. For the Israelites, it was uncomfortable. It was inconvenient Right? They had to kill their best animals. It was self-sacrificing. It was self-denying. Right? They had to trust God when their enemies were coming to kill them. They had to give the food to the strangers and to the poor, even when they didn't have money. And they had to help their neighbors when they were struggling. And it was hard to follow God because it costs something. God demands faith. That costs something. And costly faith means we sacrifice something to get it. Costly faith means that we surrender something that is hard to give up. And Joshua knew. He saw it in the Israelites. Remember, right? He knew that they would not want to give up anything. He was in the desert when they were complaining about water, complaining about food, complaining about the Canaanites, complaining about every little thing that was happening to Moses. Joshua saw and he knew the Israelites didn't have costly faith. They had a cheap faith. They had a faith that was cheap, that was free, that was easy, that was comfortable. What does this mean for us today? Well, I want to ask you all this question. Is your faith costly? Are you giving up something to follow God? Do you choose to do the hard thing, even when it's difficult or uncomfortable to do? Do you give an offering from your own money instead of always taking your parents' money? Do you take time to stand up against people that are bullies? Right? 
even if that means that you might get bullied instead? Do you pray for and think about people who are suffering or who are in pain? What are you giving up to follow God? Or do you have a cheap faith? Do you have a faith that only follows God when it's easy? Do you, do you only really follow God when it's comfortable? Do you feel like since you go to church and pray a lot or read the Bible that everything is fine? When was the last time that you followed God's way even though it was uncomfortable? When was the last time that you did something you didn't want to do because you knew that it would please God? When was the last time you chose to forgive your friend? Forgive your sibling first? When was the last time you spent your own money to help a homeless person or another friend in need? When was the last time you did something uncomfortable or hard to follow God? Not much has changed, you guys. The Israelites tried to follow God with a cheap faith, and they failed. And we are not any better. And I want to close with a question for you all today. What does your faith cost? What does your faith cost? Think about it as we pray together to end. Let's pray. Lord, we repent of our convenient, easy faith. We repent for taking your grace for granted and choosing the easy way all the time because we are so weak and so sinful and so selfish. I pray that you show us the better way. Show us the harder way that your son Jesus walked. Help us to become more like Jesus through your Holy Spirit working in us. And may our ministry become a ministry that reflects a costly faith in our lives. We thank you and we pray all of this in your son's precious name. Amen. 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 All right, guys, I will see you all after the praise is uh, over and uh, at the Zoom Bible study meeting. Okay, so see you guys at one o'clock. Bye. Good morning, Yongnak LA. We're excited to have you guys here with us. Um, thank you for joining us on our uh, for our Sunday service. Um, before we get into it, like always, we are going to pray and we are going to come before the Lord and we are going to adore Him. We are going to worship Him. We are going to acknowledge His presence and His goodness in our lives. Um, this week, you know, as, uh, as you'll hear in the teaching, it'll, I think it'll encourage a lot of us today. Um, you know, a lot of us struggle with certain things in our in our everyday lives, um, but the Lord calls us to worship, and not just worship, but worship joyfully because of the victory that He's already won. So, let's just come before the Lord. Let's pray. Let's um, let's acknowledge Him. Let's bring everything to His feet, and uh, let's just acknowledge the King of Kings. So, I'm gonna give you guys maybe a minute or so to ready yourselves. Let's pray, church. sacrifice of praise God and we do it in the face in the midst of everything that is going on Lord whether good or bad we do it in faith we do it because you have already won the victory for us Lord so God we thank you and we are excited to see what you will teach us today we are excited to come into your presence as a community once again, Lord. In Jesus, in your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. All right, so we're going to start off with a song called So Good to Me. And we're going to sing how he's been good to me and us.
has paid the highest price And He has proven His great love for us And we will praise Him with our lives And proclaim our love for Him
Goodness of God.